religion and the state, on diversity, freedom, and neutrality of justice administration. Feed the hungry, visit the sick, set free the captives. These words were from Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him. A house divided against itself can never stand. This saying goes for any group, community, or entity that refuses to accommodate differences. In the light of recent happenings in Nigeria, it is obvious that there is rivalry from ethno-religious intolerance, which is humongous threats to a unity and diversity. This is evident in the recent case of Deborah Yakubu Samuel, a student of the Shil Shagari College of Education in Sokoto, who was killed in school premises with accusations of blasphemous utterances. This insane act and other violent acts like terrorism, bombings, kidnappings, have proven that the nation is tilting from a secular state to a state threatened by a religious and tribal intolerance. Section 38.1 of the Nigerian Constitution, as amended 1999, clearly states, every person shall be entitled to the freedom of thought, conscience, and religion, and that such, no religion should be imposed as superior to others in the state. At this rate, our diversity is no longer seen as the glue that bonds us together, rather almost a menace to our coexistence. Blasphemy is an offense under Islamic Sharia law, effective across Nigeria's 12th majority Muslim northern states. Section 204 of the Nigerian Criminal Code stipulates a two-year imprisonment for public insult on religion. Nonetheless, charges of blasphemy are typically brought by Muslims against Christians or other Muslims. Blasphemy laws seem at odds with Section 38 and 39 of the Nigerian Constitution, which guarantees freedom of thought, conscience, religion, and expression. Even the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom has declared them, that is, blasphemy laws inconsistent with universal human rights. Now, the question is, how can we uphold freedom of expression while respecting other views or ideas with respect to ethno-religious concerns? Perhaps considering these processes may be a pathway to this question and managing our diversities. Empathy, building actionable framework in public spaces that addresses ethno-religious issues. Accountable religious and traditional institutions. Religious and traditional leaders or rulers should be peace brokers in time of crisis and should be responsive while being held accountable for their sermons and actions. Political leaders should always act in the best interest of the nation and not in their personal ambition. Educational institutions should instill the right ideas and knowledge that promotes human capacity and tolerance. Government should be neutral in administering justice, promoting policies that strengthens our common coexistence while managing our diversity as a nation. Let us ponder on these words by Adam Grant, an organizational psychologist and best-selling author. It's hard to keep an open mind if you don't have an open heart. You don't have to agree with what people think to learn from how they think. You don't have to share their identity to be curious about what shaped it. Treating people with civility is a prerequisite for discovery. May the soul of Deborah Yakubu Samwe and other victims of ethno-religious conflicts rest in peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's so sad. It's, yeah, it's I, I don't even know what's this kind of thing as a parent. You know, it just breaks you. Mm -hmm. Because you're thinking, this could be anyone's child. You've sent your child to school. You've brought up this child up to the age where you're now thinking, Oh, this child will soon be able to go into the world themselves and one day you hear this terrible news. What still, I think, is the fact that you never get closure, do you, with mob actions and things like that because there's no one to, to, hold, be, to hold accountable. Mm -hmm. So you don't get closure. You don't get justice because of the government's inertia to persecuting, prosecuting the people who do this thing. How do you then not wake up every day just angry at life and angry at the things that life has thrown you. Yeah. 
you know, when you're talking about um, the religion and, and what, what, what comes to mind is how people think that they need to help God. God is God. <laughs> you know, everything just baffles me. Yeah. God has the power to just strike anybody dead mm -hmm. if that is what he wants to do. He doesn't yeah. need our help. And when you think of the atrocities that people have committed in the name yeah. of religion, on both yeah. sides of the divide, I mean, when you think of in the olden days when people were burnt at the stake for what they believed in, like what you said, Elijah, you know, just that inability to allow everyone to believe in what they believe. My belief doesn't have to infringe on your own belief. And we don't have to believe the same thing. May the soul of Deborah and all the people who have gone you know, before her, may it rest in peace. Amen. What you just said about like my belief is my belief and your belief is your belief is still in our Quran and we read it every time. Ah. It's on the um, first 10 pages, um, first oh, wow. 10 surah. And we and we really we say it every time like your religion is yours mine is mine do do yours out to mine it is there we know that so I'm not even going to um, I'm not even going to speak on like that they did it because of Allah or they mm. did it for Islam they did it because of their own um, I don't know I don't know myopic to, it's not it's not for God because you read it every time when you read the first and First ten surahs, the shortest ten surahs that we read. You read it every single time. Your religion is yours. Mine is mine. Hmm. There's nowhere that is saying that their religion because of their religion. I it's didn't there. know that. It's there. It's 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 there. Well, so, but I, I think do you do we not think that it is lack of humanity though that that we are facing um, all over the world actually, but um, more so in Nigeria because we are here. It is um, lack of humanity because when you put anything above um, humanity or above your human consciousness, then mm. you feel like anything goes. If, if as a human I can't empathize with you or I can't say that if I do this to you, it, it will hurt you, mm. then, and I'm saying, oh, because of God, even if it will hurt you, God will, God, God permits me to do it, then like, is our humanity not like, I feel personally, I feel like our humanity is dead in this it's part of the world. definitely eroded and dead. Well, I, I think it's a matter of incitement and wrong or toxic sermon. Now, I, I took, I have so many Muslim friends, even from the north, mm. call Fulani Muslims, mm -hmm. my good friends, yeah. good ones, very good Nigerian citizens, mm -hmm. good Muslims. Now, I had the opportunity of interacting with a, uh, a sheikh, he's a sheikh, he's a scholar. And he sent me some messages on WhatsApp. He gave me some quote from the prophet. Mm -hmm. It's beyond to him. So he said some things yeah. uh, that, it, it, and then I went to the internet to do some research. I found mm -hmm. out that, that the prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, wa actually had Christian businessmen he, he transacted business with. Mm -hmm. He visited Jewish that were sick in mm -hmm. his community or within the vicinity he was. He had that a Christian or a Jewish person was sick. He goes to visit them mm -hmm. and show care. So I don't know where they get all this the idea from. I have as lost. So I think it's incitement, wrong, I, hateful, I think and toxic sermon. This I is where the government need to monitor. Absolutely, what that's what I was going to say. That government in action and has helped to perpetuate these things. Mm -hmm. If at any point in time, any of these things, because it's, I mean, this is not the first time these mm -hmm. things have been happening, but at no time has anyone been brought to book. Yeah. If at some point the government or government agencies have come up and say, this is what this person did, and this is... Because murder is murder. Yeah. Where, I mean, there's there nowhere where, where the law says that, oh, you can kill somebody because they said something nasty about you. Mm -hmm. If everyone were to go about killing people who said nasty things about them or people they, things they didn't agree, yeah. I don't think there would be any human on earth True. standing. People... It's, 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 I just blame the government. In Nigeria, I blame the government because... I don't hear of this thing. I mean, obviously, I don't know everything, but I don't hear of situations like this, even in core Muslim countries, that they just, they just, just mob. Yeah. Yeah. Then I believe that the Sharia law will take its course. Yes, of course yeah. And so, even in, so what's happening is no, there's no law. Even the Sharia law is not taking its course, because I want to assume that you must at least be found guilty. guilty. And you yeah. must at least have stood in a court of your peers or whatever to be adjudged guilty, and then a sentence passed. But mm -hmm. that is not happening because just the people, government is ineffective. These people cannot be judged and jury in their situation. And this is an opportunity for me to say this to our leaders, especially those from that side of the country. Are they listening? Yeah. One of them in particular, I won't mention his name, is a presidential aspirant. 
Uh-huh. He's treated. Ah, uh, we all know. Yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> it, lack of being responsible. So I'm waiting for them. What, 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 what is the situation? He doesn't vote. stand but for anything. He, he, he wants the vote. You should stand. He's lost everyone. Stand down. your foot down and he, say, he this is wrong. So it's good. Let's condemn it. And this is where I actually applaud some of the Muslim scholars that called him. Like a popular... A uh, popular sheikh, I think that was Sheikh Gumi or so. He said mm. he was condemning and he, he gave instances that this is wrong. Mm-hmm. So please, let's let's preach peace, let's yeah. preach love, let's preach harmony, and let's, let's be accountable and responsible let's for our country. Let's promote, let's promote humanity. Let's preach they they humanity. said they promote the humanity and um, the covenant of life is more important than anything. Whether you kill for religious reasons or stealing, you kill somebody because it's too or whatever. Or for love. It's wrong. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> if you say so, like Romeo and Juliet kids. <laughs> But let's try to promote humanity. We are yeah. not in the is it medieval era. What era is that? Uh-huh. The Viking. Uh, Viking yeah. era. Just kill any <laughs> Kill and go. No, it's just wrong. <laughs> All right. Upness is Ife Dolapo. Stay with us. <laughs>